If you will raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Frank Padovan, do solemnly swear. I, Frank Padovan, do solemnly swear. That I will uphold the constitutions of the United States <coughs> and New York State. I will uphold the Constitution of the United States and New York State. And fa faithfully fulfill the duties of the office of New York State Senator. And faithfully fulfill the duties of the office of New York State Senator. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> There are many others here today that I wish I could uh, introduce by name as I look out over the audience at the faces of civic leaders, political leaders, community leaders, religious leaders, and those who gave so much of themselves in so many ways. And it's humbling, I must tell you that. I mean that sincerely. They made a difference in my life because they cared. And those are the only people who ever make a difference in their life, the people who care. You know, words are really inadequate for me. There's no way I could come up with the right ones. Um, but as best I can, I want you to know how deeply grateful I am for the endless support from so many. The hundreds that are here today, the thousands over a period of months, tens of thousands, did one thing or the other, small and large. And I wish we had the time acknowledge each and every one of them. Our nation today, as we are gathered here on this occasion, a happy one, in our state, in our community, are in the midst of one of the most serious challenges in a generation. The enormity of the tasks that lie ahead call for each of us to summon the trademark strength and unswavering resolve, all New Yorkers are known for. Time and time again, we are all called upon in big ways, both significant and not quite so significant, to give back to our community. Block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, there are countless unsung heroes, and most of you are here today, all from walks of life, different from one another, but working every day to move us forward. It is those good people who inspire me, and they always have. It's been a love affair that I'm not ashamed to admit. As a community, we must stand and work together on achieving what is right. We chose sacrifice and unity over greed and self-interest. We choose civility and respect over pettiness and deceit. We choose confidence and clarity over fear and doubt. These values, the values of honesty, respect, civility, bind our great communities together and allow us to overcome any obstacle anyone wants to place in our way. We're now in the midst of President's Week and we celebrate the 200th anniversary of Lincoln's birth. And so we have a chance to reflect upon the enduring contributions our nation's 16th president made to our union. Without his sacrifice and countless other forefathers, forefathers of our great country and nation, we would not have the freedom and the opportunities we have today. Lincoln said uh, many, many things, and he's being quoted left and right, but this one I, I think is something I would like to repeat. It says, I am a firm believer in people. If given the truth, they can be depended upon to meet any national crisis. And how true that is today. Like Lincoln, I believe that the very best of our nature rises to the surface during times of crisis. And once again, we stand at a crossroad, a pivotal point in our future. When times of crisis and uncertainty grip our nation and state, it's faith in others, our fellow citizens and neighbors, 
allow us to rise above our circumstances and forge forward. It's a belief that has sustained us in tough times and propelled us to new heights of unity and growth. It's incumbent upon us to carry the legacy of Abraham Lincoln forward into a new era. As mayor of New York City during World War II, and I'm old enough to remember when he read the funnies on, on the radio, we didn't have TV then. Fiorella LaGuardia would begin every speech, or sometimes end it, with two words, patience and fortitude. And we have an abundance of both. The embodiment of those words ring true today, as they did when the greatest generation of Americans fought tyranny and fear all over our globe and protected our freedom. With patience and fortitude, the men and women of the greatest generation built our communities and raised their families. We must use these principles and roll up our sleeves once again and bring the common sense and energy that is needed in these difficult times. Serious leadership will be necessary to develop the real and lasting solutions to the problems facing New Yorkers, as we have in the past. Building a smart path to recovery and economic growth will be at the forefront of the liberations and actions in the New York State Legislature. We must root out waste, fraud, and abuse and ensure that all hard-earned tax dollars are spent efficiently and wisely. We must institute meaningful reforms to make your state government more accountable to you. We must spur onerous tax increases on the middle class and develop an action plan that will allow families to grow and seniors to remain in the communities they help build. We must continue to build a first class education for our children so that Brittany in the fourth grade at PS203 and all those like her can meet the ever-evolving opportunities in the global economy. I will, and I pledge to you today as I did in my oath, work with my legislative colleagues in ensuring that the pursuit of a higher education is affordable and that college graduates not only get a great education but have the opportunity of staying and working in New York State. We must also develop a comprehensive and long-term sustainable energy plan that focuses on alternative and renewable energy sources. <laughs> For two reasons, to lower the cost of energy and also to make a cleaner and greener New York. We must work together and fight against the dangerous health care cuts that threaten the quality of care for all New Yorkers. Health care premiums are just getting out of sight for individuals and families. There is no doubting that all these challenges and many more are great, but we're galvanized in our resolve, and I believe we will meet each and every one of them. Again, let me say I wish all of you a heartfelt thanks. I know we will continue to work together as we stand united to face each day with a renewed faith and an unyielding strength. I recently got a letter in the mail yesterday, and I'm going to end with the last sentence of this letter. It came from um, Kevin Lyons, the Grand Knight of the American Waters Council, um, Knights of Columbus. Continue, friend, your efforts and good works with the quest of God's will as your guide. Thank you, and God bless each and every one of you.